Okay, I hope uh, our first talk on paradox was helpful. Now we're going to um, go towards literature. And we're going to do problem, conflict, dilemma, and paradox in a play. So we're going to pick Hamlet. And we're going to focus on the character of Laertes. So, and I'm not doing the main character or characters for a reason. Um, we'll do that later. So this is uh, the brother of Ophelia, the son of Polonius, and the, uh, yes, uh, many other things, as you know, from the play. So let's go, let's just start with uh, an example of a problem from La for Laertes. Uh, a problem for Laertes in a very simple way. Uh, it's one that happens one time and one time only. So it has to be very simple. And let's say that a problem that he, ha that he has is that he is a man that, that is from the castle, but he is called back to the castle because of duty. So he is somebody in the aristocracy. He gets called back to the castle and it's one time. And the reason for that is there's a funeral for the king. So he's somewhere else. He's having fun. And he has to go back for duty. So one time, problem. He goes back. He doesn't want to. He goes back. A conflict now arises where he can't leave. He has to stay for a wedding. So he wants to leave. Uh, he, he doesn't think this will take more than a, a day or two or three, but there's a wedding announced, so he has to stay for that. So what turned out to be one time for duty becomes two. We go from the level of problem to conflict. Now, where does this become a dilemma? Finally, Laertes gets his father's permission to leave. And then his father, Polonius, asks the king to give Laertes his permission. So the dilemma is once you ask one elder permission, that elder has to ask another permission for you. There's never any chance for uh, Laertes to get permission directly because his father is under the king. The king asks Polonius, do have you have, have your son your leave? And Polonius says, yes. So then the king says, well, since your father says you can go, and I am the father of the country, and I say you can go, you can go. So here's the dilemma for Laertes. He's in the flow, in the pattern of always asking for permission. Um, he's not old enough to have more power where he doesn't need to do this. He doesn't... Uh, of control of his own destiny in a certain sense, and is always going to be asking permission. This is an example of, of a series of permission askings. So the dilemma is that he asked for permission, and often he is forced to ask for permission again. So how can this turn into a paradox? Laertes comes back home on a journey of revenge after his father is murdered by Hamlet and in an instant of rage walks in and confronts the king and again rather than taking revenge which he feels is his rightful due as the son of a murdered father he waits for permission. The king not only gives Laertes permission to commit revenge and murder, he sanctions him by making sure that he will be successful in this revenge. So now Laertes' dilemma becomes a paradox in that Laertes believes and wants to act on his own. He has had a problem that became a conflict by always having to ask permission. And by asking permission, he ended up to be someone that 
sacrifice true revenge for the chance to get permission, in this case, to kill and avenge for his father's death. A prince who is higher than heaven. The paradox is that only at the end of his life does he realize that his need for permission and his need for revenge are directly connected to the fact that he does not know how to act on his own. He, he needs permission. And he does one thing without permission, and that is he tells Hamlet the truth about the poisoning. Uh, this he does when he realizes that this is his last chance to, to speak the truth and not seek permission and not be granted authority. He takes the authority and says, Hamlet, thou, Hamlet, thou art slain. And in this case, they, the two of them become sort of brothers and equals, and Hamlet forgives him. So the paradox for Laertes is grounded into in his need for permission that is created by the lack of power that he has when, about move, his movements, which is created by one example in the beginning of the play of having to come home for a funeral. Paradox is the overview of Laertes. If one was to play Laertes in a play, and you merely played him as somebody who was angry and angry at older people or jealous of his sister's honor, you would miss the fact that he has a dilemma, which is, how do I know what to do if people don't tell me I can do it? And then when he finally gets the need to do something for himself to take revenge, he still needs permission to take revenge, which isn't really revenge. And only at the end of his life, when he knows he's going to die, does he do something honorable, which is what he set out to do when he did revenge, and to say the truth to Hamlet that he was used as a tool to kill Hamlet, not for as a, as a tool of the king, not for his own hand, even though his hand did kill Hamlet. So this is the paradox of Laertes. Laertes is a son and a brother and a man that can only act in reaction to other people's giving him permission to act. And at the very end of the play, when he's breathing his last breaths, only then does he realize that he is the one who has to give himself permission and he speaks the truth in his last breaths. Please listen to this again carefully. Take a look at the play, particularly the duel scene, and uh, see if this makes sense in the way we're talking about a paradox. And in this case, the character of Laertes, Polonius's son, Ophelia's brother in Shakespeare's Hamlet.